the double slit experiment. Um, quantum mechanics and modern science has actually tried to dominate the double slit experiment by saying that light has a, a dual nature, both as particle and wave, but that's absolute absurd bullshit and nonsense. Nature does not work in complex fashion, only works in simplex fashion. Everything is pressure mediation. Everything is either force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Inertia and acceleration is geometrically, as far as uh, electricity and field theory, the hyperboloid. Everything is force and motion is voluminous, but however specifically is the toroidal shape. The conjugate nature of force and motion, inertia and acceleration are respectively the hyperboloid and the torus, which if you actually take a sphere and dissect that conjugate relationship, you actually end up with the hourglass shape, which is the hyperboloid, and the inverse of that, which is force and motion, as magnetism. Therefore, we can actually say anything with volume is denotative of the loss of uh, potential or inertia. Anything that... Uh, is decreasing and so the same way when you talk about uh, molten bismuth when you actually increase the potential the energy potential to the state that it becomes molten it's kind of fascinating unlike other things that heat up they actually expand bismuth which has extremely high dielectric uh, permittivity it is also the most uh, diamagnetic i.e. hates magnetism element in the universe and you actually heat it up and it becomes molten it actually shrinks it's quite fascinating it visibly shrinks most people Almost everybody has never seen that. Um, but anyway, getting to the double slit experiment. If you actually take the negative image or just the outline of a double slit, you'll be talking about a needle, right? On the either side of a needle is obviously a window. So we could actually make the double slit experiment a lot more simple. And I made a video about this, and anybody can perform this experiment. If you actually shoot a laser at a needle, you will end up with the same interference pattern or, you know, bright spot, black spot, uh, black stripe. Uh, bright spike, uh, excuse me, bright stripe, black stripe, there we go, <laughs> on the wall, as you will from the double slit experiment. Now, it's from the premise, the invalid premise of quantum mechanics and general relativity, that uh, this explains the, the dual relationship or the uh, dual nature of light being both particle and wave. Well, first off, using platonic logic, there's no such thing as a wave because a wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Okay? When we talk about waves in the water, you can actually do an inverse harmonic of the waves that are coming at you. And technically, if you want to get really technical, waves never come at you. What we have is actually propagation, just like pistons in your car. Pistons don't move, and I actually said that in a video a couple days ago, and people thought that I had like had a brain fart or something in saying that pistons don't move. But what I meant specifically is they don't propagate in your car. Your pistons in your car, your car engine don't go this way, do they? They actually do this number. So they actually do move, but they're not moving in a longitudinal propagation. They're actually um, rising and falling in the car engine itself, as far as a simplex uh, analogy. But you could actually do an inverse wave to cause out to cause cancellation. So what is the point or premise of the cancellation? Since Mother Nature does not have a wave particle duality, well, see, there's no such thing as a duality in nature. That's what fundamentally nobody understands it. Well, at least the idiots of quantum mechanics and general relativity and modern science has never understood is that there is no such thing as a duality in nature. Duality is... Another word for paradox, and if there's anything I can assure you of is there's no such damn thing as a paradox in nature. It means where something is uh, counterintuitive to what its actual nature is. The, but from the perspective of uh, you know ignorant, stupid human beings, it obviously might seem paradoxical, but it's certainly not. We have to then, therefore, answer the question and you apply uh, retroductive uh, platonic logic to the double slit experiment, or in this case, and it works exactly the same. You could shoot a, a laser beam at a needle. Do this at home yourself if you want. Take a laser pointer, point it dead center at a needle, like tape the laser down, move it, to, and you'll actually see the same interference pattern that you would from a double slit experiment. So what is the only thing, therefore, using retroductive logic, that has been introduced as opposed to not having the needle and just shooting the laser at the wall, or shooting any light source at a wall. What has been introduced is a spatial component, whereby which divergence, and we know that light actually bends around corners, but 
Light itself is not a thing, and I'm actually saving this for the second video, because from the strict aspect of hardcore platonic logic, there is no such thing as light, because light is not a thing in and of itself. We can only define something by what it does, and it does not exist outside of what it does. Then it therefore does not exist. Light is actually nothing other than a coaxial field perturbation with transverse electrical magnetic components and longitudinal rarefaction and compression pulse perturbations of a field modality. That field modality is electrical and magnetic and longitudinal dielectric. That is, by definition, what light is. Light is a coaxial circuit. The notion of a wave particle duality as presented by modern physics, quantum mechanics, and general relativity is obviously so absurd bullshit. Mother Nature certainly does not deal in either paradoxes or dualities, nor is light a particle or a wave. Light is not a thing in and of itself at all. From the premise of hardcore platonic logic, light does not exist at all. Of course, we can see light. Light defines everything that we see and we experience when we open our eyes. I don't mean in the sense that the epiphenomena of light does not exist, but light itself as pure denotation does not exist. Light is no different than saying magnetism or dielectricity or gravity. Gravity, of course, is dielectric acceleration, but there is no such thing as light in and of itself. There certainly is no such thing as a light particle. The notion of a photon is a complete, completely arbitrary concept that has no basis of reality. It has never been the input or output of any experiment, and I know what you're about to say. You're about to actually quote Albert Einstein. By the way, the Crookes radiometer that J.J. Thompson used to show that the higher the frequency of light that breaks the threshold whereby which energy is produced, the, uh, what is it, the, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the one thing that actually uh, old Einstein, uh, Einstein, of course, never got his uh, theory of, uh, excuse me, his, uh, his uh, Nobel uh, Prize uh, for uh, Relativity, which has not only not been proven, but been mostly disproven today, but he got it for the uh, for the increased capacitance of certain frequencies of light actually generating um, energy that uh, in the, uh, oh, in the Crookes radiometer, that was discovered not by Einstein. He's the one who actually wrote the uh, paper on this, and of course I'm having a brain fart since it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, but that wasn't discovered by him. That was actually uh, discovered by J.J. Thompson. The only thing he did was try to explain it, but his explanation was incorrect. But light itself is an autonomous field modality, or as a wave or wave particle. Wave, of course, is not a thing in and of itself. A wave is what something does. Like, well, what is this? This is waving. I was like, no, that's my actually hand in motion through space and time. So what in the introduction of the needle, and of course I've had a brain fart about this, as soon as I'm in, I've, I, uh, in this video I'm going to re-remember the, uh, the energy experiment that actually J.J. Thompson invented and discovered that Einstein wrote about, which he actually got the Nobel Prize for, that he incorrectly explained. Of course, that I should have had that note directly in front of me, but I think a million miles a second, so you're going to have to forgive me on that one. I, I do know what it is, but it slipped out of my brain. What have we actually introduced by shooting a laser at a needle? In this case, as we've already explained, there's no difference between a needle and a double slit. What we've introduced is a spatial component which therefore introduces a phase variance. And when we have a phase variance, what we have then therefore created is a double entity. Light itself is not a thing. You can't, it's not a particle and it's certainly not a thing. It is a field perturbation. It has transverse electrical and magnetic and longitudinal rarefaction and compression, the coaxial circuit of light. By introducing a spatial variant, we therefore create a phase disparity. Okay, let's repeat those two words again. Phase disparity. If you actually have uh, waves in a pool and you actually stick a stick in the middle of that pool, what will happen is that the waves will hit that pier. The same thing happens in a pier out in the ocean. The waves will hit that pier, and what you've done is you've introduced a break, a spatial break in the continuity of that wave, and a wave, like I said, is not a thing. A wave is what something does. But in the case of uh, the field perturbation, we're talking about the, in e the ether here, i.e. inertia. It is impossible to even think of any field pressure mediation, excuse me, any field modality without uh, positing the ether. The ether has never been refuted, and the michelson morley experiment never refuted the ether. But what we introduce is a phase disparity whereby which then we have additive or constructive and destructive interference. So the only thing that's actually introduced 
by the double slit experiment or by using the needle where we thereby get uh, bright stripes and black stripes repeating where we get banding is a phase disparity and therefore resultant of this phase disparity due to introducing a spatial barrier to that field modality as we create then therefore in phase and out of phase components to the continuity of that field perturbation and this is no different than water going around a pier out in the ocean you can actually see it if you look little waves but of course once again the waves don't move waves don't propagate in if you could actually go out in the middle of the ocean and I've done this before it's just fun I mean I know that's the case but you can actually throw like a cup in the ocean not that you, you should litter and you can actually see the waves but the cup only thing the cup is doing just like the pistons in your car is doing this number the cup is not coming in this way unfortunately people say well sure things get pushed onto shore but that's actually only due uh, to the the backflow and the actual sloping of uh, of the ocean that things actually do start to roll in shore but sp strictly speaking from the hardcore nature of like waves out of the ocean things are actually doing this number they're not propagating this way what we have in the case of water waves in the ocean especially on the seashore where the actual ocean bed is sloping is we actually do have motion but we're talking about strictly as waves in and of themselves so don't take the analogy too far because I know crap gets pushed onto shore out in the ocean but one thing that's being introduced and, and it makes mother nature and uh, cosmic mechanics so incredibly simple is that uh, what you've introduced is a phase disparity and disrupted the continuity of the actual field perturbation of whatever frequency, in this case, uh, 520 nanometer red laser light, which is coherent, which is in phase. Anytime you introduce a spatial variant, we have geromagnetic precession, or in the case of light, we actually have phase disparity. We've disrupted the continuity. The longitudinal perturbation we end up with phase disparity in the case of the atomic model or in the coherent model of the uh, of the magnet we have in x number of megahertz geromagnetic precession the geromagnetic precession is the navigation oh this is so simple in my mind but it's so very hard to explain to you people i, I don't mean to be sound egotistical in saying that it's just so brilliantly simple but it's so impossible to dis, uh, explain. Um, in the case of the spherical model, the torus and the hyperboloid, we actually have geromagnetic precession. That is the mediation of pressure throughout a spherical voluminous volume of the loss of that inertia as measured in... A mag we end up with an egg-shaped disparity in the case of the magnet of rarefaction and compression of, ge of uh, geomagnetic precession. But in the case of light, by introducing a spatial disparity, we end up, a, a spatial variant, we end up with a phase disparity where the continuity of that light is lost and we therefore end with constructive and destructive interference. This has nothing to do with a dual nature of light as particle and wave. That sort of bullshit as promulgated by quantum mechanics and general relativity and modern science is absolute bullshit. I mean, if Mother Nature were a person, of course, she'd be a hairy armpit chick, right, wearing Birkenstocks, but... <laughs> You know, that's just an absurdity. Nature doesn't deal in paradoxes and, and dualities. A duality and a paradox, both of those are the exact same term. There are no dualities. The notion of wave-particle duality, first off, a wave is not a thing, damn it. A wave is what something that, look, this is a wave. It's like, no, that's my damn hand moving in space and time. But space and time are not things in and of themselves. Space is only magnitude, and time is a measure of those magnitudes. Time does not exist. Time is a measure. Space is not a thing in and of itself, as Nikola Tesla famously said. Space has no properties. The reification of space as something that acts upon other things is bullshit propaganda from the quantum cult and relativists, the, rel uh, the relativists. Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot for this very reason. Einstein is the asshole, excuse my language, who reified space as something that acts upon other things. Nikola Tesla said that was BS. He didn't actually use the words BS, but he basically said it was BS. So the understanding of the, of the uh, double slit experiment, or the, uh, this, in this case, the exact same results you can get from shooting a laser at a needle, 
The constructive and destructive interference is the phase disparity introduced by breaking up the continuity of that uniform field perturbation. Because light is not a thing, it is a field modality. It's actually a, a complex field modality because it has transverse electrical and magnetic. Whether that's circular or linear polarization doesn't matter one damn bit. And longitudinal rarefaction and compression. Light is this coaxial circuit of two field modalities. Magnetism, well, electricity is five times psi q and Planck of electrification. So electricity is dielectricity and magnetism. But the longitudinal component is, of course, pure dielectricity. This is where you actually get the rarefaction and compression where modern quantum mechanics is identified as the photon. And of course, photon is not the output of any experiment ever done. There's no such thing as a photon. This sort of absurdity has no basis in reality. To think that light is a particle or a photon is an arbitrary concept invented by relativists and quantum mechanic uh, lunatics. There's no basis in reality for such nonsense. None whatsoever. Anyway, thanks for watching. It is a really complex subject. It, it's, it's hard to actually um, uh, vocalize this in coherent simplex you can't take it's something so simplex but it's not simple to explain but anyway oh lordy it's tough stuff but not really it's actually very simple but explaining it is another matter thanks so much for watching if you like these videos you can make a small donation you can tell me to jump off a cliff whatever makes you happy thanks bye